Trusting in Christ is not always easy, is it? It's always best, but it's not always easy. This morning, uh, if you have your note sheet with you, uh, fill in the blanks. See what it says at the top? Nothing. So when somebody asks you what you learned at church today, what are you going to tell them? Nothing. I learned nothing. I came in and had a wonderful day yesterday. Uh, again, celebrating down at the, uh, the barn there and near Petersburg. And uh, came home and, and I actually have a funeral today. Uh, so I was up pretty late last night and came in this morning feeling just a little bit ragtagged and, and low and went back. And these guys, they pray for us before each service. And uh, I went back and there was these men and, and uh, they prayed for me. And uh, Randy Fabre in his prayer, he said, Lord, be with Pastor Lou because you know he's nothing special. <laughs> it's the first time I ever came out of there feeling lower than I did before I went in. <laughs> so he got me this morning, nothing special, preaching on nothing. I have a few things I want to just uh, throw out at you here. Probably if you're older for this, it's better. I think that you might get these a little bit better the older you are. Uh, so I'm going to throw a couple nothings at you. Uh, Nothing cleans your clothes like, like what? Bright? No. Do you guys watch commercials? Like, oh, I heard somebody say it. All. Nothing. Uh, what's it say? Brighter reds, yellower yellows. Nothing. And, and uh, you know what I thought to that? I thought, who names a product All. Go get some all. What in the world? I don't know where that came from. But, but anyways, nothing. There's nothing. If you're cleaning with something else, throw it out. Go get some all because nothing cleans your clothes like all. They said it on a commercial and on the internet. Okay, nothing freshens your breath like breath savers. Breath savers. Okay? There's nothing that will freshen your breath. like breath. Another one. Nothing says loving like something from the oven. Who said that? The Pillsbury Doughboy. Do you know in high school I weighed 105 pounds, okay? My left leg weighs 104, five pounds right now. I weighed 105 pounds, and I could not ever make weight for wrestling. I could never make weight. Guess what my nickname was? Pillsbury. Pillsbury. Don't call me Pillsbury. I don't like that name. <laughs> Last one. Nothing could be finer than to be mm, in the morning. Absolutely nothing. Could there, huh? Lots of smiles. A lot of people going on vacation, just came back from vacation. Nothing could be finer. Well, you know what? We were down there when Hurricane Bertha came through, and there were, certainly was a whole lot of things better than being in Carolina when Bertha rolled through. But uh, nothing, nothing. This is telling you that don't even look. Don't even go left or right because there's nothing that is better than these things. This morning, I hope to whisper a few little sweet nothings into your ears, uh, and uh, then we're going to be taking communion. And so we're going to... Uh, Again, take a look at a few uh, scripture texts and all this. It'll be various scripture texts. Uh, but as we look at this, these verses, there are some things that we just don't understand in life. That, that matter how you look at it, no matter how you try to figure it out, they just, you just can't understand them. And one of them is how the blood of Jesus Christ washes away sins. How that that works. Well, I know we say that, and I know we understand the principle. It was put in a way that we could understand it. But, but how, how does that happen? How did God actually become man? God became man in Jesus Christ. How in the, the kenosis of Christ uh, in Philippians 2, 5 through 8, how does that work in and through his incarnation? It's just mind-blowing. But here's what we need to understand this morning. It's okay that we don't exactly uh, know how everything works. As long as it's true and it never fails. And these things that we're going to look at is the only thing in life that you can point to and say these words to. This is true and it never, ever fails. So we see things we, we just don't understand. There's a, a story told of an old farmer he said, you know what, I'm taking my, my boy and my wife, we're going up to New York City. We're going to go to Macy's, the shop for Christmas this year. 
Guy had never been anywhere near New York City. Never been near a city. And he packed up his wife. He packed up his child. And, and uh, they head up and, and, and they go into Macy's. That, that old boy didn't say a word from the time he hit New York City. He just looked around. What? And they walked down the street and they went into to Macy's. And, and his wife just took off there. And him and his boy were standing there and just in awe. And they were standing in front of an elevator, and, and uh, they saw this, this uh, 80-year-old woman, and she come over, and, and uh, she hits a button, and the door's open. And she got on, and the door's shut. And he looks at his boy and went, oh. And about two minutes later, the door's open, and a 27-year-old woman walked off. Well, then he sees this woman. She's like 98 or so, and she has a walker, and she comes, and, and, and she goes over, and, and uh, she hits the button, and the door's open. She gets on and hits the button, and, and it closes, and, and, and he says, boy, did you see that? He says, yeah. Do you know what that is? No, Dad. The door's open, and a 27-year-old gal got off of the elevator. He said, boy, go get your mom. <laughs> That's bad. We don't have to understand how things work, but God does. This morning, our, <clears throat> excuse me, our first point is, what can wash away our sin? What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You got that? We could quit and go to communion right now. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You can do all kinds of things and churches will tell you and point you, do this, do that, give this. Uh, no, there is nothing that can wash away our sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, uh, 4 through 6 says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace uh, from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before the throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler and over the kings of the earth to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to, uh, to his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. He washed our sins through his blood. And then he gives a little comparison example in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. There are people selling out their lives for silver and gold. And in comparison to the blood of Jesus Christ, he says so these corruptible things like silver and gold for, you were, uh, for your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He washes away our sin. How in the world does this work? How does it take place? What does it look like? I brought an example. It's not a very good example. But the guys will love this. This is, men, this is for you. Okay? Ladies, sorry. Get something else. This is, is the Sin Carrier 2000. I designed it myself. I'm quitting preaching, and I'm selling these on Amazon. You can get one out at the desk after the service. Look at this. You put this on here. <coughs> Look at that. It's the Sin Carrier 2000. You can adjust it. It's fully adjustable sometimes. <coughs> And you can just carry your sin all around. Isn't that fantastic? Guys, don't you love that? One size fits all. And you can just carry your sin all around. What does the Bible say? Do we carry our sin? You know that thing's Coast Guard approved? Did I look like a Baywatch guy when I had that on? Just anybody. Terry's the only one going, yeah, dude, you really look good. We're not, our sin, Jesus Christ did not come and say, <clears throat> I, I forgive you of those sins. They're forgiven. And then we towed them around. He said, I wash them away. I take them from you. I remove them from you. He said, what's the big deal about that? The guilt, the shame that goes along with sin. He says, I totally remove that. 
But Lord, I sin every day. I totally remove it. It's gone. As far as the east is from the west, I remove your sin. And I choose not to ever remember it anymore. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that a beautiful thing? I think with Christians, maybe in in the world, I can sell a lot of these, excuse me, but not with Christians because they understand God doesn't cause us to carry the burden of those things after they've been forgiven. He says, I take away, I remove your sins. John 1.29 says, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He takes them away. On your paper, I have this, picture this, 12 million people uh, living in Pennsylvania today, about that, about 12 million people. The first drop of blood that fell at Calvary was enough to cover every sin of every man, woman, and child of that 12 million. The first drop that fell and hit the earth on Golgotha was enough to take care of every sin. As a matter of fact, hey, we just got our new taxation with representation or whatever it is, you know, the new tax and all that, uh, since 1959. Every single person who's been born in, in Pennsylvania or Blair County since 1959, that first drop of blood was enough to cover. Every person who has ever lived in Pennsylvania, that first drop of blood was enough to wash away the sins. 319 million in the USA, enough. First drop of blood. Seven, about 7.4 billion people in the world, enough. That first drop of blood was enough to cover the sins of all mankind. Boy, I certainly don't know how that works, but I sure am glad that it does. I sure am glad that it does. I sure am glad that God isn't counting on me for anything in this salvation story. I kind of uh, did a little bit of math last night, and I'm not real good at math. Um, But I put down here, if I sinned once a day for my life, how many sins I would have? Just once. And that's by deed, by thought, and even the ones that I'm doing that, that I don't know. Can you imagine one a day? My goodness, I have one about every 10 seconds. But I just said, oh, we'll just go one a day. Just like the vitamin. How many sins do you think I've accumulated? 20,805 sins. That's with one sin a day. One, just one. 20,805 and, and we got churches out there saying, boy, if your good outweighs your bad, <laughs> it'll never happen. It'll never, ever happen. What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Second point here is, <clears throat> excuse me, what can make the devil flee? You know what the ending is to it? What can make the devil flee? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12, 9 through 11. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast onto the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out, and they overcame him by the blood of the the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death through the blood of Jesus Christ we have power in and through his spirit and in and through his shed blood to have victory over Satan I have a little video clip Randy can you play the video clip here for us Sheldon. Yeah? You wouldn't like to sort of let me pass by your street today for free, would you? Why should I? Well, then I could give Paul back a nickel I sort of owe him. Who's stopping you? Well, if I give him back his nickel, and I have to give you a nickel for passing by your street, I ain't gonna add no nickel for milk. And boy, Sheldon, 
It ain't easy getting a peanut butter and jelly sandwich down dry. Yesterday, I almost choked. Drink water. But if I don't drink milk, I'll get soft bones. I sure would like to give Paul back his nickel, Sheldon. What if I say I won't give you the nickel? A knuckle sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> you want to try it? No. You know what I'll do to you if you tell anyone? Uh-huh. You'll pulverize me, then you'll knock my block off, then you'll give me the old one, too, <laughs> then you'll jump on me. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Old Opie. Old Opie. Andy Griffith Show. Do you know what Andy's resolution was to this? Opie, let him hit you and then just smile. What? Go get beat up, Opie, and then just smile at the guy. Listen, way too many of us are giving up our nickel so quick. We're just giving up our nickel so quick. There it is. There's Satan with something. Here's my nickel. Here's another nickel. Here's my nickel. We roll over. The Bible says resist the devil and he will what? Flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. I know that, that, that there's scriptures that talks about flee youthful lust. And there's some certain things that we come upon that tells us to flee. But basically when it comes to Satan, he says resist the devil and he will flee. And too many of us, too many believers, here's my nickel. Here you go. Got another nickel. Or just get beat up. He gets beat up and he goes home. And then he's like, how'd it feel? He goes, it felt pretty good, Paul. I'm sorry. I've been beat up in my life. I've been beat up. We, I went to a, a, a little league baseball game at Centennial Field. And, and I'm, I'm sitting there at the field watching a, a game. And I thought, I remember being beat up here as a 12-year-old. I can remember it. I can't remember what I ate this morning. But I can remember getting beat up at Centennial Field at 12 years old. And I looked over to Mansion Park. And you know what I thought? I remember getting beat up over there. I got beat up twice over there. Really good. They were memorable ones. The one, honestly, I think I needed nose reconstruction. That's why my nose is so big. My nose used to be this big till, till some young man punched me 17 times in the nose. And now my nose is this big. Well, I got punched in it. And I remembered those things. The Bible doesn't say, let Satan beat you up. I'll just let him just beat you up and smile. <laughs> no. Give me your nickel. No. You know what he says? Resist the devil, James 4, 7, and he will flee. Resist means to fight against, to remain strong, to exert force in opposition, and not roll over with all four paws up. Come to my house sometime and meet Presley, my dog, little cockapoo. You'll be scared to death. That boy rips and raves and scratches at the door, and he just wants, wants to kill. So don't rob my house ever. You'll be found in it dead. And you come in, and he will go crazy. And if you go, boo. He's done. He's done. What's he do, Terry? Behind the couch. Come on, I'm done. I can't take that. That's not, that's not what the Bible says. It says resist the devil. Stand against him strong. We all know the story of Joseph. And what happened with Joseph, with, with Potiphar's wife? I love the story of Joseph, and I love the story of whenever he was confronted by, by, Joseph, or by Potiphar's wife. And we know that Potiphar treated him like a million bucks. Joseph, you can have everything. You have rule over everything. My checkbook, my four-wheeler, four-wheel camel. You, you have, and it's yours. Take it. Don't touch my wife. Don't touch my wife, man. That's the only thing that's off limits to you. And when Potiphar's wife came to Joseph, 
I fully expected if he was going to turn and do the right thing, that he would say, how can I do this sin against your husband? How can I do, this guy's treating me like a man. I can never do this to your husband. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, where, where does that put him? That puts him in a position of, you know, Potiphar hasn't been too nice to me. All right, here we go. That's what that does. Do you know what Joseph's words were back to her? How can I do this great sin against my God? That's called resisting the devil. That's called being in a tough situation and saying, <clears throat> how can I do this sin against my God? See, Joseph was prepared for that situation with his relationship with Christ. What can make the devil flee? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Satan is powerful, but he's no match for the Son of God. Last one. Let's, let's finish this up real quick here. What can bring me peace? With, oh, I got two more, actually. What can bring me peace with God? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For it pleased the Father in him that all the fullness should dwell, and in him reconciled all things to himself by him, where thing, whether things on earth, things in heaven, having made peace through the blood uh, of the cross. There is nothing, nothing, nothing in life like having peace with God. Nothing. To be able to lay your head down at night and know you're at peace with God in a country that's gone wild, that's gone mad. To have peace with God, there's absolutely nothing like it. Nothing like it. I, I'm not going to read to you the whole Psalm 51, 1 through 13. I have that down in your paper. Uh, but at the very end of that, in verse uh, 12, Basically, David says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Restore to me the peace of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners shall be converted to you. Bring the peace back in my life, God. After this run with Bathsheba, after this sin, after a year of it, he's broken in Psalm 51. <clears throat> excuse me, and, he's, and he says, restore unto me that peace, that joy. Friday was a really crazy day. Michael asked me, can you go help me move somebody? Listen, honestly, I'm almost passing out from picking up that weight right now. But my mind still says I can do things. He said, can you help me move a guy? And I was like, yeah. And we went out and we started moving a person and they had steps. One step is enough. Now listen, the move, if I would have just went out to this person's house and walked up and down those steps three times, I would have fallen over. But yet moving things. And so we moved this person. And I was literally soaking wet. Literally soaking wet in sweat. Michael was soaking wet with sweat. We came back here. And I'm like, I'm going to my office and study. To, to Marianne, that means I'm going in and I'm going to sack out for about a little bit here because I'm, I'm shot. Okay, that's our translation. And I walk into the office of Marianne and said, hey, there's, there's some lady out here that, that uh, wants to talk to you. A woman who walked from the jail. She just got out of jail and she came up. What would you like? Anything? Well, what can we do for you? Anything. If you want to do anything, I'll take it. I'm like, okay, get more specific. Well, I need to get up to Dubois. I don't have anything. I don't have a pocketbook. I don't have any money. I don't have any. And so we helped her a little bit, didn't we, Marianne? Just a little bit that we could. We took her somewhere where hopefully she could get a, a ride. And I'm sitting in this car, soaking wet with sweat. Not the best air freshener for Marianne's car. And, and we take this woman and, and get her going. Come back. And I had to pick up my grandson. So I go pick him up. And I go home. And as soon as I got home, Pappy take you on the wagon. Pappy stand on his head. Pappy do this. Pappy eat beans. Pappy do... About 11 o'clock that night when he, he went home, or about 10 o'clock that night when he went home, I sat down on the couch, and it was like, ah, peaceful. Man, isn't it great to have a, that little bit, ah, ah, a little bit of peace. God brings peace. Again, to finish this, what can make God's people one? Nothing but the blood of Jesus and for sake of time, 
In Ephesians 2, <clears throat> verses 13 through, through 22, he gives us this whole story about how that through his shed blood, he has, he has broken the enmity uh, between man and God, and he's broken the enmity between man and man, and that we can come together and we're one body uh, through the blood that was uh, given at the cross. We become one body and we can work together. We're a building built together, fitted together, growing in a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are being built together for a dwelling place uh, of God in his spirit. Only through the power of God can a bunch of ragtag people set aside their differences. Guys, what are we about to do? Set aside their differences and accomplish something for God. We can pull our resources together and do something great and mighty for God. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ. We're called to work together as a body the body of Christ, to bring honor and glory to his name. And that's what we celebrate today. It's that blood. It's that blood that was shed at Calvary for each and every one of our sins. But it's only applied if you will receive it, if you will ask him and trust in him.